Hi, I'm Erin Marie Paquette, Director of Education with the Mosby Heritage Area Association here at another location in downtown Leesburg, inviting you guys to join us on this walking tour digitally um, or to follow up some other time when you're able to get out of the house and get some fresh air. I'm standing here at the house of John Janney, who is a longtime resident of Leesburg, yet he's not one of our most known historical figures. John Janney was born in 1798 in Alexandria, Virginia, and he was born to a Quaker family, a, a family that subscribes to the Society of Friends. Um, and this is a group who, of course, are strong abolitionists, who believe in equality and hard work. Um, when John is just a young boy, they move here to Loudoun County, to this area. As a young man, John becomes a lawyer working at the courthouse. He marries Allison to Marmaduke, then after called Al Alice Janney, um, and they live in this very fine house only a couple blocks away from the courthouse. You can't beat that commute. Now, John Janney has bigger aspirations than just being a lawyer, though. He is a party, a party member of the Whig Party, uh, which at this time is a very pragmatic, um, southern-focused party. They're really focused on democracy, business, you know, doing what's best for the communities and not ascribing a lot of these moral platitudes that you see emerging um, in the other political parties at the time. John Janney is very much constructing an image of himself as a um, almost a reluctant politician. He sees himself as a similar thread to some of our founding fathers who who partake in public service because it is their duty and not because they're trying to get fame or glory from it. Um, he is part of a delegation in the early 1830s from Loudoun County that is set to um, to recommend what to do about the slavery issue here in Virginia after Nat Turner's rebellion in 1831. Now John Janney at this time, again, born into a Quaker family, he is abolitionist and the whole committee here from Loudoun suggests that that slavery actually be abolished across the state. Of course, Virginia does not take that recommendation and, and remains a slaveholding state. It's interesting to note that within two years after making that suggestion, John Janney purchases his first enslaved workers. So we see him slowly maybe changing perspectives or gaining new ideas throughout his long lifetime. So by 1834, they have at least two enslaved workers living here at the house with him, he and Alice. Um, and then based on that, um, John Janney increases his interface with the local government. He is in the state constitutional convention. In 1850, he's instrumental in gaining universal suffrage for white men here in Virginia, which at the time is a big win for democracy and a big win for the counties in Western Virginia who don't have the large, large land holding, you know, individuals like they do in the Tidewater areas. Now, as he's gaining in popularity, um, he's also gaining on a national level, too. In the 1840 presidential election, John Janney almost wins the vice presidential nomination, which, of course, was this the year that William Henry Harrison became president, which then led to John Tyler, another Virginian, becoming the president as well. So our own John Janney was that close um, to getting the presidential seat, which he said he never wanted. Again, cultivating that idea of the, of the dutiful patriot. Now, because of his long history in state representation and in local representation, when the word secession begins being whispered about in 1860 and 1861, um, it's very clear that in January, when the secession convention meets in Richmond, they elect John Janney, our own Loudoun County, to be the president of that convention. He's going to be in Richmond for three months He's a little older at this point, and he's constantly writing home to his wife, Alice, number one, how much he wants to preserve the union, and number two, how much he misses her and he just wants to come home. So that's kind of John's um, experience while he's there in Richmond. At first, all of the votes that they're taking with representatives across the state are to support the union. They do not want to leave the United States. Virginia, of course, is very proudful of our long history with the country. Virginia basically had a monopoly on the White House for the first 20 years, you know, of the presidency. Um, and of course, a lot of Virginians shed their blood and spent their lives to win freedom and to win the United States, its country. 
So at first, John Janney is not worried about secession, but as the weeks creep by and as the months creep by, there are more and more extremists and more extreme views being presented inside the secession convention. Even to the last vote, John Janney cast his ballot in favor of the union, but it is not enough, of course, to sway the other delegates and eventually Virginia secedes. It's not until after the final vote that John Janney goes back and asks that his vote be changed to fall with the majority, because even though he does not believe in secession, he does believe in unity within Virginia and sides with them. He then returns, you know, here to Leesburg, and it's here that he and Alice remain um, until his death in 1872. And so it's very interesting because in a lot of our Virginia history, we hear about the careers of so many great men and their careers began with secession, right? Began with the Civil War, the histories that we remember them for. Whereas John Janney had a significant effect on our local history here, but really his career kind of had a capstone, an end, with that secession vote. He and Alice, as I said, remained here throughout the war. Um, and we actually have a great quote that, that Joe drew up for me um, that Alice had as a reaction to the Battle of Ball's Bluff. Again, these are um, kind of reluctant Confederates as far as Alice and John are concerned. Alice wrote, the town was filled that night and next morning the stream poured onward and for three days it was undiminished. This is troops coming in. Oh, how my heart ached for those poor fellows who would never return but leave their bones to bleach in some battlefield. It was to me a sad spectacle to behold that army. One of John Janney's last public acts as, a, as an old and ill man was in um, 16, or sorry, 1870 to actually cast a ballot in a public vote again, participating in um, the democratic elections that were taking place as Virginia was able to participate in the United States government yet again. Um, so that's an interesting byproduct of you know, our history here. And also interesting to note, because in 1862, when Lee was visiting Harrison Hall, visiting uh, with his deputies and visiting with a son, he also made time for one very important social call, and that was to come here to John Janney's house to visit him. Um, and as far as we know, the last time that the two of them had seen each other was in April of 1861, when John Janney handed Robert E. Lee the sword of command. Um, on behalf of the secession convention. So a very poignant meeting I'm sure took place between them, but sadly we do not know what they said. Thank you for joining us on our walking tour of Leesburg. Um, stay tuned for more videos as we post up while schools are closed. Um, we hope you have a chance to follow along all of our video streams and also to get out and get some fresh air. Thank you.